Kenji is one of the best open-world survival sandboxes I've ever played. However, it does suffer from lag and frame stuttering due to the game loading assets as you explore its massive open-world map. So I tested Kenji on three different storage types to see how much storage speed would make a difference in mitigating how choppy the game can be. And just a little bit of a disclaimer before we get started, I couldn't find benchmark software for this specific type of test, so if you have any ideas, please share them in the comments. I actually had to watch each clip and make sure I was counting the frequency and severity of each frame lag segment. So please keep in mind, this type of testing is rudimentary and prone to human error, but I hope you find something interesting or useful, even if you have to take it with a grain of salt. Alright, initially let's talk about the setup for this test. I'm also going to leave timestamps so that you can skip this part if you wish. Our character for this test is Beep. Of course I used Beep. And I outfitted him with two scout legs that got him up to about 50 miles per hour run speed. And I had him run from the top right corner of the map to the bottom left corner for each test. All testing was done at normal game speed for testing consistency. And because Beep is running at about 50 miles per hour, it should put enough strain on the game engine, loading terrain assets, and terrain detail. Each run took about 35 minutes, and I would count each time I would see light stutter in the duration of a fraction of a second, moderate stutter in the duration of between 1 and 2 seconds, and severe stutter in the duration of longer than 2 seconds. I used two machines for this test, machine 1 being a Ryzen 9 5900, 32GB of RAM, Radeon RX 6800 XT video card, and a video resolution of 4K. Machine 2 is a little bit older, running a Ryzen 5 3600X, 16GB of RAM, GeForce GTX 1070 Ti video card, and a video resolution of 1080p. And lastly, for the setup, both machines were running the same settings, except for screen resolution. So at first glance, these results are kind of what I expected, seeing progressively better performance with each drive type. I thought the more severe loading times, like moderate stutter and severe stutter, would be more obvious with the older hard drive type. But all three are pretty similar in that respect. The biggest changes I noticed were with the frequency of micro stuttering. I thought NVMe access speeds would dramatically reduce all stuttering, but there may be some diminishing returns somewhere, maybe even inherently in the game engine itself. So it seems, at least for my setup, that NVMe alone may not be the answer for a completely 100% smooth Kenshi experience. Onto Machine 2, you can see there's quite a difference with diminishing returns on faster drives. The old hard drive is still very slow, and it has significantly more moderate stutter than before. Also, I was a little bit surprised to see NVMe storage performing much closer to the SATA SSD in overall smoothness, unlike what we saw with Machine 1. The manufacturer specifications for the NVMe drive state that it's roughly six times faster than the SATA SSD. My hunch is that the slower overall speed of the older machine, especially the video card, can't take full advantage of the NVMe speeds. We can see that there is a bottleneck somewhere and it doesn't appear to be the NVMe drive performance. So overall, I would say Kenshi does take advantage of more recent hardware, and you can also try turning down your game settings like I did, such as turning off shadows, which drastically improves Kenshi's overall performance. If you have any tips or ideas in getting Kenshi to run smoother, please let us know in the comments below. Either way, Kenshi is a gaming experience that surpasses its tiny flaws. It is an experience unlike any other. As always, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and look after each other. I will see you in the next video.